Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the upcoming third-person mobile ethereal clash of souls. I am your host, the one and only Mangus. Joining me, as always, is my friend, co-host, and all-around swell guy, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I'm pretty good, Mangus. <laughs> Happy to be back <laughs> doing ETE. Were you miming me again? No, Were you miming me again? I would never. No, because no, I no. didn't notice until I was done. I was so into it. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but I'm excited to be back with ETE, man. I've missed it, and I'm glad that the community's missed it as well. Like it's a warm, fuzzy feeling that like everyone's like, "Where's ETE?" It's like it's coming. I yeah. promise. <laughs> Uh, that, I think that's both of our faults. I was going to, I was going to complain. I was going to take full responsibility for my absence, but uh, you also <laughs> hey. took off for a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, but it's all good. We're back oh, well, now. At least it happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to catch up tonight. We're going to talk about um, a lot of the stuff that's been going on with Ethereal since we since our last episode which was about a month ago maybe more than a month i'm not even sure and uh yeah that's it's we're going to talk about the kickstarter we're going to talk about the cinematic overview the uh or cinematic trailer i i should say we're going to talk about some of the videos they've been releasing and uh we're talking about the ui and the improved ui that they've had they've had all kinds of stuff going on and uh we haven't had a chance to talk about it so jelly let's get into it tonight <laughs> um I guess we should start off with probably the biggest thing and probably the saddest thing, which is the Kickstarter did not work out for them. Yeah, I mean, so the Kickstarter was running for about 30 days and it had a $75,000 goal. And I think at the end it got to about 30,000 was where it hit mm -hmm. just before the end of the Kickstarter happened. Um, but it gave a lot of insight for the Ethereal dev team of like what the community wants to see, what they expect to see and just where we're at in terms of development, what we can expect, um, for lack of a better way to put it, from the community and their response to it. So even though the Kickstarter didn't make it, I think it's a very positive direction for the QG team to like be like, okay, we know where we stand, right? That, that's the most important thing. We know where we stand. Now we know where to go and improve on all the different aspects. So it's sad that it didn't make it, but I think it will be a good thing moving forward as good as it can be right it's it's still yeah. sad right but um there will be alternate funding methods coming in the future so that's something we're still working on the initial details for um there's been talks of doing like a patreon where it'll be lower barrier to entry for the majority of the community members you could do like five dollars a month just show your support and get some rewards in the meantime uh, but this like i said details are still being finalized and all that kind of stuff well, it sounds like you're trying to purify a turd because uh, <laughs> you're, you're pouring sugar on shit. It's not good that they didn't meet their Patreon goals. However, I don't think that I don't think they ever were gonna gonna meet that goal of seventy five thousand yeah. dollars. Like that was a very high goal to set for a MOBA in two thousand twenty one. MOBAs are a dying breed. Mm -hmm. um, I have full faith that Ethereal will kind of. Um, bring that back a little bit. I, I think this is going to be the next big game, but to ask people to get involved in a Kickstarter for a MOBA is a lot to ask. And $75,000 is quite a bit to ask, mm -hmm. especially seeing as how they've already made like over a hundred thousand dollars on NFT sales. So I think that's probably the route they need to go. If they do, if they do like restart on like Indiegogo or something, then they need to set a much lower goal and then set stretch goals. Like this is the goal we want to meet. And then if we reach this goal, then we'll, and you know, we'll implement this or when we reach this goal, we'll implement this. Um, that's the way Kickstarters work quite a bit. Like you, you rarely see a Kickstarter that has met its goal that didn't ha also have stretch goals. Like they didn't, set their initial actual funding goal from the beginning and i think ethereal set their initial funding goal from the beginning and i think that was a mistake yeah i mean something you and i talked about before i joined the ug team because you and i got a preview of the kickstarter back in a while ago i don't remember when that was <laughs> yeah um, it's been a while but 
something you and I talked about and that we mentioned to the UG team is that that goal may have been a little high, right? Like that, that's something, that's feedback that we gave to them. And by the time I joined the team, that had been all solidified. So it wasn't something I could influence. Uh, but that's a big thing that we have to, UG has to take into consideration going forward is like what, like I said, what the expectation from the community is in terms of what UG can expect and also just where they have to go from here in order to make those those things more of a reality for themselves. Yeah. I think um I think Patreon is the way to go. I think there's enough people interested in UG that they can give them a monthly flow of income to start spending on a variety of things. Mm -hmm. If they if they do a Patreon, I'm I'm on board. I'm go, I'm going to sign up for that Patreon. Um, but what I expect though is something in return for that money. Um, kind of like I guess, I guess Project Stamina at this point is kind of a, a bad example. <laughs> but, uh, but the way they did the pay, their 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 Patreon posts, I would love to see something like that from Ethereal. Some some exclusive content coming only via Patreon. And uh, you have to buy in to receive that content, mm -hmm. whether that be lore or actual game updates. I don't really care, but I think Patreon's the way to go for them. Yeah, like I said, it's something something we're definitely looking into is Patreon. That's kind of the one that I think I prefer the most as mm -hmm. for a plethora of reasons. Uh, but I think exactly like you said, it's it's something that the community can have more direct instance in, right? We can do posts over time, make them exclusive. Um, something we're looking into as well is doing cumulative rewards. So even if you, Mangoose, come in at $5 a month, right? If you, over the course of the time you've backed whatever we go with, decide to, you've backed a total of $20, you get certain rewards for meeting that $20 cumulative goal rather than just your individual $5 monthly. Um, Trying to offer more incentives to doing that, even though it's got a lower barrier to entry for a lot of community members. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. Because, it, yeah, it feels bad that somebody that can contribute $15 a month gets more than somebody that contributes $5 a month, even though that person that's been contributing $5 a month has been doing so for much longer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody has a different financial situation. Sometimes you can afford $15 a month. Sometimes you can afford $5 a month. Yeah. And I would really love to see the $5 a month people rewarded for their loyalty. Yeah, I definitely think that that's something I have not seen other companies doing in, in terms of those cumulative rewards. That's something I really want to do for the Ethereal community. Being someone that came from the Ethereal community, that would be such a thing for me that i would have been like that's rad right i can do five dollars a month and slowly earn those of uh, those bigger rewards that i can't afford to do in a lump sum i think that's just a, a great option for the community it's like playing a free play free to play game and only accumulating in-game rewards mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of thing <laughs> but yeah i mean so unless you had anything else on the kickstarter or the future for that i want to get on to the gameplays mangoose no that's it let's get on to the gameplays go for it jelly so we started out with the Talos gameplay, then we did Dante and Leah, I believe, so far. Um, the Talos gameplay came out alongside the cinematic. And the Talos gameplay, no sugarcoating here, got a lot of uh, constructive criticism from the community. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was a good thing to see, right? It shows, A, the community that the game is playable, right? That we had a game playable full kits, the whole nine yards, right? But there's still a lot of work to go. It's still a pre-alpha build. I know you've played it, Mangoose, right? It's, but the abilities are there. The general animations are there, even though those need some work once the mocap suits come in. But all in all, it's a playable game. Then we took a lot of that feedback and then into the Dante gameplay, showcased a lot of the, the other elements and a different character. Then Dante gameplay got feedback and we implemented that stuff into the Leah gameplay and then showed Leah as well, as well as flying and not how all of that is going to work. And the more gameplays are coming in the future that'll do the exact same thing and show the updates. So that's, we kind of, we knew to an extent that the Talos gameplay 
was going to look the way it did. But we wanted to show like, this is where we started. Now we're here, right? Like we, we've, every time we're one-upping ourselves saying like, okay, yeah, you're right. Those things were an issue. They're fixed. Look how quickly we fixed them for one thing. And look at the new implementation of those ideas in a week later, two weeks later, whatever the time frame may be. I'm, I'm glad you said that because now I don't have to be the bad guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say like the town, like start with Talos, like what the fuck? Why'd you, why'd you start with Talos? Because Talos is on a scale of one to 10, as far as animations go for all the heroes. And then take this from somebody that has played has the game. Talos has by far the worst animations of anybody. Mm -hmm. So if you had a problem with Talos' animations, but they weren't that much of a problem, you're going to accept everybody else much, much more. So if you looked at the Talos gameplay and you just had some slight reservations, then you're good to go because it just gets better from Talos. <laughs> like, I, I, and I can also kind of understand leading off with Talos because, God, he is so much fun to play. Dude. Like he's my I personal favorite. Him. So <laughs> I avoided him forever. And then you kept playing him. And like, I kept seeing how well you were doing with him. So I tried him out and holy shit, is he fun? <laughs> it's like playing crunch. Mm -hmm. I love playing crunch and Talos is like playing crunch to a, like another level, like another level of crunch. And I fucking love it. <laughs> when you land those combos just right and the multi-stage abilities, oh, it just feels so good. And just, just weaving those auto attacks in between all those abilities. And like, since he has abilities that recast, mm -hmm. oh, it's like, <laughs> Q basic Q basic. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, e, basic. it's so good. <laughs> oh yeah. So much fun. Um, and then the and radial sever has so much range on it and then applies the bleed. Oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> so I'll actually give all the ETE wa washers, listeners, whoever you are and you Mangoose, a little uh, blooper about Talos that we realized recently. His radial sever had an infinite vertical hitbox. Oh, really? So we were in testing the other day and Ilea flew overhead, but she was like one hit. And I hit R just because I was and she died. And it was like, oh, this is great. I love this. Can we keep this? Uh, And yeah, she managed to die from it. Greatest feeling ever as a Talos. I was like, Haha, I got the flying lady. Screw you. That's what tall acts. <laughs> We got it fixed right afterwards, right? But it was like, oh, interesting. I didn't realize that was a thing. <laughs> so it was a cylinder instead of a cone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'll so much that. fun. <laughs> I think that's going to be a big challenge going ahead for Ethereal is cylinder versus cone. Yep. And when, they, when it comes to abilities, because when you're like right now, Leah is the only one that's that, that flies around, but there's still a lot of verticality in the game. But, um, yeah, there's going to be more people flying, so you're definitely going to have to pay attention to the to those uh, those capsules. It'll be interesting, that's for sure, to go through mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So, uh, all right, let's let's get into talking about their um, their cinematic slash gameplay reveal trailer. Yeah, like they said from the beginning, they weren't going to start their Kickstarter until they had the trailer ready with some gameplay. And that's exactly what they did. And um, Jelly, I've definitely got to compliment you. The gameplay portion of that cinematic was amazing. Like the way you synced everything up to the music, the way like like you see Dante, you see him targeting in, and then you see then you see the next target. Oh, it was just really good. Thanks, man. Really good. I'm not crying. You're Love crying. It. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Um, God, what's the voice? What's the voice actor's name? Daniel. Daniel Hodge. Yeah. Daniel Hodge. Such a great job on the lore. When he was voicing the lore portion, such a great job. I only wish, I only wish that they had started with a little bit of gameplay and then led into the lore. But because I think that hurt them a lot in the Kickstarter is because somebody looking into the game, they're getting like four or five minutes of lore before they ever get any gameplay to find out any indication of what the game's going to be all be going to be all about i think that really hurt them in the end i love their lore they have great lore but i think that should have been weaved in amongst uh, gameplay and cinematics uh but they, they they went full force from the start 
lore for like three minutes, um, which is cool for like a follow up trailer, but not the initial trailer and definitely not the one you want to post on Kickstarter because you got to hook people in. You got to hook people in. Yeah, I mean, so the one I had influence on was the third, the gameplay section, right? So <laughs> I love hearing all the good things about that. Uh, but absolutely, like it's, it's like I was saying before, there's a lot of things that UG is learning from that whole aspect, right? Of the cinematic the Kickstarter itself and knowing what to do in the future going forward of posting gameplay. Like, like you said, hooking people in, then maybe dump a little bit of lore and then kind of keeping that cycle going um, because new people that come into the game have a hard time when they see five minutes of lore and then five minutes of <laughs> gameplay afterwards, right? It's, it's just that little bit of like, I have to sit through how long of this before I can see what I'm backing, what I'm putting my money into. So learning experience across the board, but definitely good insight for sure. It's like subverse whenever you play that and you came for one thing and then when you get 10 minutes of backstory it's like come on now <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm here for oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah I th but overall the cinematic trailer if it would have been the second in a series fantastic fantastic um i really like the little cut scenes they had the little cinematic cut scenes they had a lot of really good stuff going on. I just don't think it was right for the very first. For, for, I don't think it was right for the Kickstarter video. That's that's about all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had Daniel Hodges' voice. Don't we all? Seriously. <laughs> don't we all? I would just don't like walk all. around places talking <laughs> like him. Just make people like his epic voice walking around. I love it. <laughs> Do you want to get into the UI improvements? Yeah. So the UI got basically completely overhauled. Um, before in the Talos video and Dante's video, there was a lot of feedback on the UI and we were already working on it by that point, but it was, it was kind of that like, great, we are making the right decision by reworking this UI. Okay, that people disliked the first version for a number of reasons. And so the, goal of the new version of the UI was to make it much cleaner and take up way less screen real estate than the previous one. Um, I don't remember the exact figures, but if I remember correctly, we about halved the amount of screen space that was being taken up by the UI while still keeping almost every detail that was on it before on screen. Mm -hmm. So that just was a change that had to be made because when you're taking up a certain percentage of screen real estate, right? It's harder to see the game itself. And that's what we're there for. We're not here to play UI the game. We're here to play Ethereal <laughs> that has a UI, right? So it's that change was absolutely something we were excited to implement and change. And then when the new UI went out with Leah's video, a lot of people were like, this is way better. Like this fixes a lot of the issues that we had with it. Certain small tweaks here and there, health bars bigger or items looking slightly different. That's fine. Those are tweaks we can absolutely make being in the stage of development we're in. Um, but know, knowing that the community responded well to that UI change meant a lot on our end to see right. those changes having an effect. I'm, I'm really happy to see that because I'm really happy to see that you guys are taking input from the community, internalizing it, and then making it a realization because you guys have really good heads on your shoulders. But, you know... A thousand heads are always better than 10. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And uh, the community has really great ideas, stuff that will just blow you away. And I'm really happy to see you guys taking that input from the community and making it a reality. Yeah, that's something that I, being as part of the marketing team, that's I look at almost every comment on every YouTube video. I look at any post, Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, the whole nine yards. I'm looking at the <laughs> comments of like, what is what are these people saying? What is the like outlier thing that they really want changed something we did internally was we actually created a a excel sheet and ranked each like comment or criticism about things and like percentage based on percentage went okay this is the thing that has the biggest thing let's work on that first this is the next biggest thing let's work on that next like truly ranking these in terms of importance for the community and then going down the line of of implementing those fixes and changes right 
Is that your official job title? Is just is um, marketing? Yes. Uh, I, because I think of you as everything but coding. <laughs> that's what <laughs> I think of you as. I mean, I, I don't think that's my uh, everything but coding is my official job title, but whether or not that's what I do is a whole different story. <laughs> yeah, because I think you have a massive amount of input in the game. That makes me really happy because you are a gamer's gamer. You are you fully commit to the games that you participate in. Um, you're very good at gaming, whereas I am not very good <laughs> at actual gaming. I'm just good at having a personality of being entertaining, I guess. And uh, and you are as well, but you're also just very good at the games you play. And uh, I'm excited about what you're going to bring to the team as, as a UG member. I know you've been a UG member for a while now, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe, maybe it's the alcohol talking. But I feel like uh, get, just give you a good shout out because you have definitely had a positive impact on UG's development so far. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate it. I'm not again. I'm not crying. You're crying. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but I guess what you could say is I'm a man of many tinfoil hats. So, <laughs> but I, I the Titans now that you're an inside man. I, I don't know. What well, somebody's got to step up and take over. I, tinfoil task force needs a new leader. Des, take that shit. <laughs> Des, you heard it. You've been nominated. Can't back down I now. I think, I think Sardi might be a better candidate for Tinfoil Titan. Oh, dude, Sardi. Yeah. Sardi's on top of it yeah. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like dropping hints and Sardi will be the first one in my Discord being like, I figured it out. It's like, oh, dang, Sardi. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Sardi. Des was the first to come to mind because I've, I've been looking forward to playing some Streets of Rage with him. But uh, yeah, Sardi. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I said that's so weird. Okay, so <laughs> I think is is that about all we wanted to cover tonight, or um, was there some more stuff? I think that's everything. I mean, there's yeah. always so much more, so much stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, mocap. We can talk about the mocap, and I can give a little yes. more information on that. Uh, yeah, so go for it. We talked about that. We're gonna have a mocap uh, suit that'll help with a lot of those animations. We are updating some of the animations in the meantime to make them feel better overall. Um, but they're not going to be perfected or polished to the fullest extent because we know this mocap suit's coming. Uh, because of delays due to the Ponderosa we're in, the company that that's purchased the mocap suit is actually hiring Kratos's mocap actor to do some animations for us, which is currently in the works. We should be getting those relatively soon, which is just a cool thing to be able to say, like, we have animations from God of War... Kratos is mocap actor. That's awesome. Yep. Like that's in in my marketing brain. I'm like that is such a huge like check mark we can add to our thing, add to our list. Uh, that is so worth the delay in getting the mocap suit. Hundred percent. So worth it. Hundred percent. Like it's <laughs> just one of those things. And so once we get the mocap suit, it's gonna be full bore into mocap, getting all the all the animations updated, making them feel better, polished out, the whole nine yards. So we're just waiting for that to come in, but it's, it's super exciting. I think for UG and it'll help level up the, the feeling of the game. I think once we have all those new animations. In. I mean, I'm sure he's great at his job and I'm sure he's going to do some great animations, but just, oh my God, just the name attached. Exactly. <laughs> attached, like, right? like, there's, there's an indie game, like an indie Metroidvania that I follow called steam dolls. And they have David Hayter, the voice of Solid Snake, that does all the, the voice acting for that game. That is a huge draw for that game. Like, otherwise, that game would be just another Metroidvania again amidst a sea of Metroidvanias. But they got David Hayter. Exactly. And right now, Ethereal's got Kratos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, it's such a big thing. We could be like, yep, that's us. We got that guy. Like, what are you going to say? <laughs> Super, I think super he'd be cool. good for Talos, not so great for Noxus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want a big muscly guy doing animation work for Noxus? What are you talking about? Here comes my beam. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Take this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, though. Oh, man. Boy. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm sold. We're we're changing everything. He's Noxus from now on. He's just gonna be. 
Um, He's just going to do, do animations for Noct. Oh, I'd be so pissed. We'll get him on Noxus, Malaya, Kalia. <laughs> like, we'll just go down the line of the female, the like super small female characters. Those are the ones he's going to be the mocap actor for. Oh my for. God. If we could get Peaches to do, um, God, I forget what her name, she, she changed her name to. Pears. Oh, Claire. I, I was thinking of Pears, not, yeah, Claire. If we can get her to do the like evil yes. Kalia voice. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> and then have David Hayter do the animations. Oh my God. Not David Hayter, fuck the Kratos guy. I'm so in. Yeah, evil Kalia <laughs> is now even more endorsed by me. <laughs> Blood and Viscera, my favorite, like, dude. Like everybody thinks that she's gonna come out there throwing magical spells and stuff. She's just out there suplexing motherfuckers <laughs> and like clotheslining people. Like, what is this character? Exactly. I mean, you guys haven't seen her kit yet, so you never know. <laughs> Secretly Kalia suplexing it. people. <laughs> Oh, I love that idea so much. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> oh, man. All right, shit. All right, Jelly. Did you have anything else you want to talk about tonight? I think that's everything. Just keep an eye out for updates that are going to come from the UG team pretty quick here. Try it on. Um, uh, any plugs you got? You been doing anything? Uh, I have not. I've been working on Ethereal <laughs> mostly. So. <laughs> And playing the Raka. Yep, that's those are the two things I've been doing. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> what about you, Mangus? Uh I I have stepped into the uh the realm of animation. I released my first animation um tonight as we're recording. It will be two days ago if you're watching this live. So um if you want to check that out, I th I think it's pretty cool, it's kind of cute. And then, like, there's the members only, which is kind of uh, a little more brutal. <laughs> but, yeah, if you want to check out my animation videos, I'd really appreciate that. I, I would love for them to take off because just animation is really interesting to me. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Cool, man. Yeah, go watch this stuff. I got the notification about the members only thing. and I was like, ooh. <laughs> oh, did you really? Yeah. Right, right on. Yeah, check it out. It's a little more brutal than the... Uh... <laughs> the original so uh okay guys uh great to get back up with you guys great to get to to, to, to get back into doing enter the ether really love doing this show um really love hanging out with jelly uh, i haven't been doing um the tests as much as i should be but this is a really good chance to reconnect with jelly we really are i like this dude i like jelly i really do and it's and it's fun to hang out with him. And it's fun to do these shows, but we're all looking forward to this game that we can all play together. But until then, I hope you all join us as we enter the ether. <laughs> Man, goo.